He is easily one of PM Modi's trusted economic advisors and among India's top-notch economists. He is not seen at many public forums, but RBI Governor Urjit Patel lets his actions speak louder than words. He has successfully steered the Indian economy and financial markets through a turbulent phase after demonetization. He may be low-key, but he is no pushover. Just when you thought an interest rate cut was a slam dunk in the last RBI policy statement, he did nothing like that and contrary to expectations, even adopted a mildly hawkish tone. 100 days after demonetization, Dr. Patel speaks to CNBC TV 18 and MoneyControl.com in his first television interview since taking charge as RBI governor last September. The Oxford and Yale trained economist opens up to me in a rare and exclusive interaction. From demonetization to rate cuts, from the level of the rupee to global economic challenges, Dr. Patel answered questions on a range of issues. Dr. Patel, thank you for joining us and for giving us this exclusive interview, your first after taking over as the governor of the RBI. Uh, my first question is related to the policy. Uh, in a run-up to the policy, many commentators were expecting that you would go in for a rate cut, given the low headline inflation rate. Uh, but you did not do that and you shifted the monetary policy stance from accommodative to neutral. What are your reasons? The monetary policy committee uh, uh, resolution and uh, statement that, uh, that uh, was published uh, last week was fairly extensive in terms of the explanation that was given. Uh, uh, to recap, since we have committed to move closer to 4% inflation because of the legislated and notified mandate of the government, we needed to look beyond the headline number to see where the kind of disinflation that is needed to take us towards four would come from. And uh, the committee felt that there is, uh, that inflation excluding food and fuel is something that has been stubborn uh, since September, October, and has shown a little sign of coming decisively below five. Uh, and, and that was the main reason why we had to look through the headline inflation. The other reason uh, is that uh, the effects of the demonetization and now the remonetization uh, also may impact some of the commodities where we have seen disinflation, uh, but we don't know uh, to what extent and for how long. Uh, in, it's most likely going to be short-lived, for example, the the disinflation in vegetable prices. Therefore, the headline number needed to be looked through, keeping in mind that we need to get to closer to 4% uh, on a durable basis, uh, but in a calibrated manner. And that was the reason that uh, the MPC thought that we needed to have the flexibility going forward. Therefore, the shift uh, of the stance from, uh, from accommodative to, to neutral. Uh, um, that's the main reasoning. We also find that internationally uh, commodity prices have firmed up. Uh, the food, international food price index has gone up. The base metal price index has gone up. Uh, crude prices continue to be in the mid-50s uh, uh, and, uh, and staying there uh, for some time, uh, given the data of the past few months. So the uh, Monetary Policy Committee uh, noted that while inflation uh, will be in the range of 4 to 4.5% 4 in the first half of the next fiscal year, it then actually increases to 45 to 5%. Uh, and, uh, and that was one of the uh, main uh, reasons uh, why we had to take the stance that we did. Uh, that while we will have a, some beneficial impact of, on inflation in the next few months, uh, it then reverses itself, uh, mainly because uh, inflation, ex food and fuel, uh, continues to be relatively high. How should we understand and interpret uh, the neutral stance? Does it mean that uh, there will be no rate cuts in the next three months or no rate cuts in all of 2017? The Monetary Policy Committee uh, could either keep rates constant, increase them, or bring them down. Uh, it, it gives, it, there are three options possible uh, compared to when it is accommodative. Uh, so, 
so given given how the inflation outlook changes uh, if at all over the next uh, few readings uh, in terms of the data that uh, that comes about and our projections uh, based on that uh, for the for the next uh, fiscal year uh, uh, a policy changes could be either one of those three okay uh, under what circumstances would you consider a rate cut is inflation the only thing or are there other factors in the mix as well well uh, you know uh, we have been mandated by the government backed by legislation that we have to have an inflation uh, uh, target of uh, of about 4% a central tendency of 4% uh, over the medium term uh, and therefore that is our main uh, main objective uh, uh, in terms of the policy of the uh, of of the central bank uh, which is now determined by the mpc does this stance of yours mean that the economic recovery could be sooner and sharper than what most forecasters are predicting well uh, actually um, I, if you look at our projections uh, that uh, that were uh, published last week as part of the mpc uh, that we we expect uh, growth to be about 7.4% in the next fiscal year uh, which is about 50 basis point more than than the projection for the current fiscal year uh, and and therefore there is there is a recovery compared to this fiscal year going into next year uh there are some uh, some uh, some good reasons uh, behind that recovery uh, one is that international trade uh, uh, especially exports after a long time uh, are now showing some life we have had five months of uh, positive export growth uh, i think the budget uh, uh, has provided impetus to uh, to key sectors which has multiplier effects uh, realty housing uh, the rural segment uh and uh, and and over time we will see that uh, that uh, some of the capacities that had been installed uh, in the past uh, will come up for expansion uh, so the private uh, investment demand uh, is is something that maybe in the second half of this year we we may see a little bit of uh, of philip coming from that source also Uh, so our central estimate for next year is 7.4% which i think is a is a highly respectable growth rate under the circumstances your assessment of the economic pickup and gdp forecasts are rosier than what has been predicted by the chief economic advisor uh, and some others as well what do you have to say to that well you know we had to we predicted a 7.1% growth uh, in december for the current fiscal year uh, based on the information we had at that time uh which was in the immediate aftermath of the withdrawal of the specified bank notes uh, uh and uh, and we we came up with a 7.1% number uh through the exercise that we had done internally at the RBI uh which was also a number very close uh to what two multilateral agencies at the time also came out with <clears throat> both the ADB and the World Bank came out with numbers of 7 7.1% uh and uh, and then we have revised that estimate at the february policy as more data has come in and while we give a point estimate actually our statement has a fan chart which shows that there is uncertainty around these numbers uh, i mean we could very well give a, a very broad range and then never be proved wrong uh, uh but but you know we don't have that luxury today marks 100 days of demonetization a period which has been fairly turbulent for the indian economy do you think that uh, you know in your estimates do you think that the indian economy will be able to shake off the negative impact of demonetization well uh, almost everyone agrees that that the impact is going to be a sharp v that we we would have a, a downgrade of growth for a short period of time but the remonetization has uh, happened at a at a fast pace uh, and that was uh, that was part of the plan Uh, that uh, subsequent to the uh, withdrawal of the specified bank notes uh, our production plans uh, and and supply processes uh, would ensure uh, that the remonetization happened uh, as quickly as possible uh, and which given our capacities in terms of printing currency notes uh, uh, is is uh, is at a high level looking back uh, you know the last 100 days of demonetization 
Do you think that the principal objectives of the exercise have been met? And do you think that corruption has been reined in and counterfeiting as well? Well, you know, the, there were several objectives uh, behind this. Uh, from the RBI side, uh, the fake Indian currency note uh, is, a, uh, is an important issue uh, that, needed to be, uh, that needed to be addressed. Uh, the other collateral benefits from this uh, in terms of greater accountability, better public finance, more transparency, are by definition uh, areas that uh, that take time for 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 to fully play out. Uh, we have also had uh, financial reintermediation in terms of uh, greater financial uh, savings going into deposits, mutual funds, insurance. Uh, so there have been a fair number of of benefits. Uh, uh, the impetus given to digitization uh, is, 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 is something also that, uh, that, that should be beneficial uh, going forward. Uh, but I think in all these uh, supportive policies and, and more work is needed uh, so that, uh, that these benefits are not only tangible uh, but uh, are long-lasting and durable. Okay, one must compliment the RBI for managing the rupee despite the FCNRB outflow and demonetization. Do you really believe that the rupee is uh, overvalued and is that a cause for worry? Well, you know, uh, the exchange rate value of the rupee is, uh, is broadly market determined uh, and uh, the Reserve Bank of India, in terms of its long-standing policy, uh, is that uh, we intervene uh, uh, only uh, uh, during uh, uh, episodes of undue uh, volatility. There is a feeling that, you know, if the rupee is overvalued, then, you know, it could mean, uh, you know, it could stunt growth because imports get good cheaper. So that's why the question. Yeah. Well, you know, our current account is, uh, is, uh, is low uh, and it has been low for, for some time now. Uh, and, and it's at a level that is easily financeable. Uh, so, so, so in that sense, uh, the rupee is broadly where it should be. From your vantage point, how do you see the global economy uh, given the you know, uh, momentous political changes that have taken place and its knock-on effect on economic policy and trade? The change in policies from the largest economy in the world, uh, namely the US, uh, is something that the world uh, will have to start getting used to uh, because it is, it is a major change. Uh, in terms of uh, openness to trade, in terms of trade barriers, uh, uh, in terms of the kind of uh, fiscal policy that, uh, that, that the new government may undertake, uh, which against the backdrop of a tightening monetary policy stance by the U.S. Fed has, the, uh, has a real possibility of financial volatility. Uh, going forward. I think some of this uncertainty may get resolved. Uh, for example, what the new government's taxation plan is going to be, which will then impact the fiscal deficit on the U.S. Uh, and uh, some of it may actually add to the volatility going forward if there are too many f uh, flip-flops uh, in, in terms of what is actually going to get implemented. So I think, uh, I think we are at, uh, at an important juncture uh, and the possibility of, uh, of negative uh, consequences for, for countries around the world uh, is a possibility. Uh, I think Asia may come in for special treatment uh, because almost two thirds of the uh, US trade deficit in goods uh, is with respect to Asia. And you know, we just have to see how, how things evolve. Uh, in terms of tangible policy changes, uh, which uh, I think the U.S. government so far seems to be fairly determined to carry through. Now how much of a cause for concern is it for an economy like India? I think it's a cause for concern for, for the world. Uh, I think it's a cause for concern for emerging markets. Uh, uh, and uh, in terms of creating uh, financial volatility, uh, I don't think anyone will be uh, will be safeguarded from it, and we have to we have to manage this uh, as it plays out. Uh, there are some things that are under our control, 
and that is to ensure that uh, our, we ourselves follow uh, sound macroeconomic stability rules. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I think we are, a good, we are at a good place uh, uh, with respect to that. We have had a budget where the fiscal deficit has been reduced. Uh, we have a central bank which has a mandate for flexible inflation targeting. Uh, we have reserves which are at uh, over $360 billion. Uh, and, uh, and we have a, f a current account deficit uh, that continues to be modest. Uh, so we need to look after these uh, attributes of financial, of, mod of macroeconomic stability. Uh, and, uh, and that will allow us to withstand some of these sources of turbulence uh, that, that, come, uh, that come from the wider world. Fed Chief uh, Janet Yellen has signaled a uh, rate hike possibly as early as next month. What would it mean for Indian financial markets in the rupee? I think uh, the Fed had indicated in December uh, that there would be two, possibly three Fed hikes uh, in 2017. So a fair bit of that is already priced in. And, uh, and given that financial markets are forward-looking, uh, from, uh, from that source alone, uh, I would expect, uh, and I would underline the word expect, uh, that, uh, that the repercussions may not be uh, that much uh, as compared to when the Fed increased the interest rates in December and issued a hawkish statement. I think that was the news. Uh, I think uh, subsequent to that, uh, the, Fed, uh, the, uh, the Fed views on what it was going to do in 2017 has been fairly consistent. You know, just taking the world economy question forward, do you see that there is some room for optimism as well? What would you advocate today for corporate India? A caution, cautionary uh, uh, stance or an ex expansionary mindset? Well, you know, it's not uh, not for a central bank to advise uh, advise businesses what it should do. Uh, I think uh, I think there are you know opportunities uh, uh, in in each sector, and they are best placed to to figure out how they want to both manage their risks uh, while expanding their footprint. So, Rajit, we've been sort of uh, you know fed on the virtues of globalization for the past two decades. President Trump, you know, is increasingly towing a protectionist line. Uh, what does this trend mean for an economy like India? We have had a sustained opening up of our economy since the early 90s. And uh, I, I don't think that we should change our stance uh, uh, in, in any way, uh, because we do benefit from, from an open trade regime. Uh, and I think India's policy that, uh, that uh, that the openness of trade should be carried through a multilateral uh, process uh, is the right one. Uh, now, you know, depending on how, uh, how the U.S. carries forward the agenda that has been, uh, that has been put out uh, and how other major economies react to that, because I think one issue that people are not uh, realizing is that uh, there will be a reaction to, to what what, what the U.S. does, uh, that could get messy. Uh, uh, hopefully, wiser heads will prevail and, and we won't go down that road. Uh, but uh, but uh, I think it's important that we should be on the side of, of keeping, uh, keeping borders open uh, with respect to trade and movement of factors of production. So what, in your opinion, are some of the global worry factors that probably keep you awake at night? I, I think the lack of... Um, of a consistent policy um, um, enunciation from major economies is the main source of volatility. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think clearer policies, policies that take into account uh, what, uh, you know, in terms of the externalities that they create, uh, if, if those are not put out in a, in a, in a consistent, well-thought-out manner, uh, then that causes uh, financial volatility. And, uh, and given how fast financial flows happen, uh, it, it affects us uh, very quickly, as indeed it affects uh, uh, other countries. Uh, I think in terms of our uh, mandate of the RBI, uh, 
uh, etc. I think the hardening of, of, of some of the internationally traded commodities is something that we need to be uh, worried about because that would feed into, into inflation. Uh, so, so there is a real side to it and there is a financial side to it. By the way, most, uh, most analysts expect in 2017 the world to grow at a faster pace than 2016. So I think that's, uh, that's the good news. So on the subject of growth rate, uh, do you think we will be able to achieve 9% plus growth rates anytime soon? Well, you know, uh, these things uh, uh, in terms of predicting what are the sustainable growth rates uh, are, are, are not easy to make. If very fundamental reforms take place, uh, especially when it comes to factors of production like, uh, like land, labor, uh, then a higher growth rate is possible. Uh, now, how much higher than the seven and a half that, that we are uh, achieving so far uh, is difficult to say. Uh, uh, but the fact is we did grow at some point faster than, than where we are now. Uh, but it could very well be that uh, that was unsustainable and this is sustainable. Uh, so, so I think seven and a half percent growth rate is not something to be disappointed. You know, uh, how do you respond to the recent criticism of the Reserve Bank of India? You know, do you personally feel upset about it? It's important that one grows a thick skin fast in this business, and I think, I think we have done that. Uh, uh, we have gone about our work. Uh, uh, we had uh, undertaken major challenges uh, 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 during this past few months. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, valid criticism is something that we are open uh, for and, uh, uh, and we, take it, we take it in the spirit in which it is given and try to improve ourselves. But, you know, everyone also agrees that uh, not only the RBI but the wider banking system has, uh, has done a um, Herculean job over the last few months and, uh, and uh, over this period when there were many challenges and I think that's also important to, to keep in mind, uh, given the scope uh, of the challenge, uh, uh, how far people worked to, to, to get over them. You know, you spent a lot of time explaining me some of the work that you've been able to do over the last few months. Uh, do you feel sad that, you know, sometimes uh, media tends to look at the negative more than, you know, some of the good work that has been done? I mean, even in the case, let's say, of remonetization. Well, you know, uh, it's, it's, that's always been the case. So <laughs> that we are that uh, bad. That that, uh, that uh, you know uh, <laughs> these things. Uh, uh, what makes news is, is 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 fairly subjective in this regard. In terms of uh, the remonetization, we are proceeding at a pace uh, that is um, uh, that is very quick, and therefore uh, uh, we have manage to, to bring the situation to normal uh, uh, along, along most uh, of the dimensions uh, after the uh, demonetization. In a way, this was, this was part of the plan. We would be printing uh, the currency notes uh, to full capacity from day one, and we would reach a threshold point in this, uh, in this process when things uh, do, become, uh, do become more or less normal. That's again part of the, of the, of the good work that has, uh, that has been done. So you are saying that it was a part of a plan that was set into motion many months before the demonetization exercise kicked in? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that, uh, you know, given the currency replacement that was required, uh, these kinds of uh, uh, plans and programs are set uh, in motion a long time back uh, in terms of the supplies, the orders, the logistics. Uh, organizing the distribution uh, uh, just in terms of the sheer number of notes that, uh, that need to be printed uh, in a new denomination to replace the older ones. So, Rijit, most finance ministers, uh, you know, over the past few years expect the RBI governor to cut rates. Uh, despite that, this time you've been able to maintain a mildly hawkish, a hawkish stance. Just goes to show that, you know, your equation with Mr. Jaitley is terrific. Well, you know, the best way that a central bank can support growth uh, uh, on a durable basis is to, is to ensure that inflation is, is low, stable, there is financial stability, 
and uh, that is the role that the central bank plays. Very few countries grow at a high growth rate if inflation is, is high and, uh, and volatile. Uh, so I think in a way we are doing our bit to support uh, a higher growth rate uh, uh, but on a durable basis. Uh, and uh, with the constitution of the MPC, you know, we have now diverse views on, on how the monetary policy is, uh, is, is established every two months. Uh, and I think that's a very important uh, milestone in our economic uh, history, uh, that, that the monetary policy is now determined uh, through a committee process uh, where there are uh, both independent uh, committee members uh, and representation from the RBI. Bridget, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you for taking time out and giving us this exclusive. It was indeed my privilege to interview you as the governor of the Reserve Bank of India. All the best. Thank you, Rahul. I appreciate it.